on you lot, welcome back to another video, welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm talking Photoshop, I'm going to show you how I remove those annoying distracting objects and blemishes in your automotive photos. I'm talking lamp posts, signs, bins, manhole covers, chewing gum that's just randomly stuck to the floor and those inevitable bug splats that happen when you're driving to a location. Let's jump straight into Photoshop. Okay, so there's three main methods or tools that I use inside of Photoshop to help me tidy up an image. The first one being the spot healing brush tool, which is this band-aid looking thing, or you can use the keyboard shortcut J. The second one being the clone stamp tool, which is the one that looks like a stamper, or you could use the keyboard shortcut S. And the last one is content aware fill in conjunction with one of the selection tools, either the, like the lasso ones or the rectangular marquee tools. Don't worry too much if you have no idea what any of those tools are or what you, you can use them for. That's what we're going to go through in this video. Before we get into manipulating and adjusting these photos, what I would suggest doing is creating a duplicate layer of the layer that you're trying to adjust. Just in case something goes terribly wrong and you want to revert it back to the original, you can just delete that layer and then start again. So go ahead and hit Command J on Mac or right click on the layer you want to duplicate, duplicate layer, you'll get the same result. This is also good once you've started making some adjustments you can use it as like a before and after by toggling the layer on and off. Let's go ahead and start removing some of these distractions from the back of this GTR. Firstly I'm going to use the spot healing brush tool. I'm going to make it slightly larger than the little bokeh ball that I want to get rid of. I'm going to click on it and then Photoshop is going to take a sample of that area and then try and blend all the pixels back together. If we zoom in you can start to see a little bit of like discrepancy where you've lost some detail because Photoshop's blended the pixels together. That is the only problem with the spot healing brush and um, because it's blending the pixels together sometimes you can get some like weird artifacts. That's the reason in this bottom right hand corner because they're that close together I wouldn't want to use the spot healing brush just because you'll get something that hopefully looks something like this. As you can see there's a little artifact there and it doesn't look as clean as it would do if you use another method for like that for example. So go ahead and hit L and get the lasso tool up. So we're going to use content wear fill. Do a rough selection around that area. Shift, delete, content wear fill. These are the settings that you want. Hit OK. And that's a million times better. We've retained some of the detail because Photoshop has actually created pixels that will fit in that area rather than blending everything together. For those little ones, yeah, spot healing brush is perfectly fine. For those ones where there's a little bit more intricacy and especially this one where it's absolutely blown out, I would use content wear fill and that's worked out perfectly fine. Moving on to this picture of this Porsche then, to say if you want to get rid of this bit of the road here and make it into one nice bit of black tarmac, then I'd lean onto the clone stamp tool or the content aware fill tool. Uh, these little bits of white discrepancy on the road here, could be chewing gum, could be whatever, perfect to get rid of with a spot healing brush tool. Same as like bug splats on the front of the car or front of the rear or whatever, or little bits of mud that's happened when you've traveled to the location perfect for the spot healing brush tool. For this area we're going to use the clone stamp tool so we're going to hit S to bring that up and then we're going to make a selection by hitting option and then clicking on the area you want to make the selection. I'm going to go with this area here so basically what we're doing we're copying this area and we're pasting it over here. So I'm going to paste that in now or draw it in and I'm going to stop roughly about there I'll show you why because once we zoom in you can see like there's a change in the road texture and the color so what I'm going to do is make a brush a little bit smaller and I make another selection around the wheel here and just paste it in there and once we zoom out it's all going to look more natural and it's all going to blend in a little bit better so if I go ahead and delete this layer and we'll uh, use the content aware fill tool now so go ahead and hit L or choose your preferred selection tool. I'm just going to draw around this real quick here. I'm going to hit shift, delete. Those are the settings again that you want. Hit OK. That's going to do its thing. I'm going to see what it looks like. Okay, so that's not done a bad job. There's a little bit of area of tidying up there, and there's a little bit of area to tidy up just underneath the wheel there. So it's not done a bad job. 
So say it's done a terrible job and you're not quite happy with it, instead of hitting shift delete, go ahead up to edit, content aware fill, and then this is gonna give you what Photoshop is taking its sampling from. So all the green is where Photoshop is making its selection or its sampling from. So go ahead and brush that out. And on the right hand side here, you'll see um, it like a live view, what's what's changing. So if we, do, we just want the road, we'll just delete everything that's not the road. So it's only taking its sampling from the road itself, which is pretty much all that. As you can see, this is getting changed live. And once it's done its thing, this is what it now looks like. Hit OK. And then now you can see that bit there that was needed a little bit of touching up and a little bit underneath the wheel needed touching up is now gone. And that's just another tip and another method if uh, content aware fill is just not doing exactly what you want or you're not getting the desired results. You can go in there, edit content aware fill, and it's going to bring it up as another layer copy. As you can see, that's the difference it's made from just doing standard shift delete. In the beginning of this video, I said to you, you could use these methods and tools to remove things such as lampposts. So I thought it was a good idea to show you how to remove a lamppost in a trickier situation compared to a situation that's a little bit more simpler. One thing to take in consideration, if you've got a really busy background and there's lots of stuff going on, it's gonna be harder for you and Photoshop to correctly and accurately remove that object without it looking too obvious. Take these two photos, for example, this one's gonna be a lot trickier to remove because there's a lot of straight lines and things I've got to match up compared to this photo where it's just clouds and some blue sky. We'll take a look at this one first. I'm gonna be using the clone stamp tool just because I don't think the content aware fill tool is, is gonna do a good job here, to be honest. I think it's gonna be a hell of a lot easier just to kind of try and match up all this stuff and just clone it in and out. And yeah, we'll do this one first and we we'll see how we get on. So we're gonna hit S to bring up the clone stamp tool. I'm gonna to zoom in and quickly buzz through this top bit for you. And then I'll show you the final result. So we'll go ahead and hit option. And I think I'm gonna sample, we'll go with this one. So pretty much just gonna paste that in. Buff it to about there, then we're going to go up and delete that. And try and blend it in a little bit more here and there. And that's pretty much what I'm going to do for the rest of photo. I'm going to take samples from certain areas. And then I'm just going to try and match them in as best I can. Say so if you're watching me faff around with the spot on bit, I'm just going to come back with the final image. All right, so this is the final image. Lamppost not there, lamppost there, lamppost not there. Not too bad, right? So going on to this easy one, pretty much just going to content aware fill it. Just going to zoom in a little bit. Draw a mask around this lamppost here. I'm not going to take it too close to the car just because of the way, obviously, Photoshop samples stuff. It might do something weird down there and we can always come back and clone stamp that in or do some uh, spot healing down there deselect that zoom out a little bit and then that's pretty much perfect there's you wouldn't have known a lamppost was there also remember when you are cleaning stuff up to say you've got a reflection there of where the lamppost used to be make sure you get rid of a reflection on the car as well that's a telltale sign that something was there and you've taken it out there and you forgot to take it out down here so yeah that was removing two lampposts in two different situations one a little bit more trickier than the other. So this last photo here is kind of like a bonus tip, a little add-on. So showing you the three main methods that I use to remove objects in a photo. Uh, say if you're really struggling and one of those is just not working out for you, then this could help if the photo allows it to. Let me explain. So this is what the photo used to look like. So there's loads and loads of annoying little distraction signs, uh, the building name and number and stuff. And then the main one was this part of the road here. It, it just didn't match. And I really liked this side of the road. And no matter, no matter what I did to this side of the road, I just couldn't get it to match. I tried all those tricks in the beginning I showed you with the content aware fill, just use this side of the road and I just couldn't match it. 
at all. So in the end, I basically copied and pasted and then brushed out the bits that I didn't want. And it gave me, gave me this result. And it's really simple to do. You can do it really quickly now. So basically all you want to do is we'll create a new layer here. So we've got background copy is I got the polygon lasso tool and I basically just made a selection around the car of all the bits that I wanted. Made it bigger than I wanted and then we got that. So command C, command V, pasted it, copied and pasted it. And then I flipped it horizontally and I just moved it over to this side like so. And then I scaled it up so it overlapped the car on this area here. That was fine. And then I created a layer mask. Got the brush tool, make sure black is selected here. And then I just pretty much pasted in everything from photo below that I wanted I'll do this quickly so basically I just pasted in all that that I wanted pretty much something like that it was a little bit tricky going around the car yeah that, that was pretty much it and it's simple as that so if you've got a photo that allows you to do that and you're having no joy in cleaning up a road to make it match up with say a better looking side of the road just copy and paste it brush in and out the bits that you want jobs are good and that's going to be it for this one guys i hope i taught you something new inside of photoshop that you didn't already know a few takeaway points from me though all these tools that i have shown you do have the limitations so get inside of photoshop have a play around with stuff it's all trial and error see how good you can get it actually clone stamping stuff and see how much you can content aware fill stuff without it looking terrible <laughs> and really obvious and if all else fails there are far more people qualified on YouTube, so go and watch their Photoshop tutorials because I am by means no Photoshop expert. If I did teach you something new, please go ahead and hit that like button. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, leave a comment down below. And if you want to support this channel, please go ahead and subscribe. With all that being said and done, I'll see you lot in the next one. Peace.